Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today as we get into the latest, what has happened today, I wanted to give you guys a double upload because things were actually kicking off earlier on in the day, although I was not available, but we are here to get through everything in this video today, but tomorrow, keep your eyes peeled because if there's anything that does come out, you'll be getting a video on my thoughts and tomorrow's preview day so Chelsea versus Arsenal we're back baby and we're back better than ever to jump into the preview for the game where a watch along will be done on match day for the first time in two years on this channel so make sure you're going to be there for that hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded and you'll be getting a notification that I'm live when we do go live with the watch along one hour prior to kickoff make sure you guys are here 4:30 p.m uk time that's where it's all gonna start so preview for that will be dropping tomorrow as well as that, don't forget, check out the socials. They were on screen for you. They're in the description right now, Instagram and Twitter, as well as all the other socials associated with myself and with the channel. Thank you all very much. Let's get cracking because we've actually got quite a bit to get through. Starting off with, without any delay, here it is. Chelsea have activated a clause into Ian Matson's contract to extend his deal until June 2025. Chelsea wanted to avoid a free exit for the fullback, as Nizar Kinsella reported. Chelsea will try to get longer deals sealed in the next months, or he could be sold in 2024. Have to say, for the first time in a while, fair play to Nizar Kinsella. Nizar Kinsella coming in with um, a pretty big latest, let's say, and um, got the credit from none other than um, Fabrizio Romano. Now, let me show you the exclusive from him because it's, it's deserved. Nizar came, came out with it first, so here it is. Exclusive, Ian Matson's Chelsea contract now runs until 2025. An option to extend his deal has been taken up amid reported free transfer interest from Barcelona. Barca, Barca, listen, Barca, we, we spoke about you yesterday. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you guys got bigger fish to, to, to fry at the moment you've got bigger things to deal with you've got Laporta dealing with 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 indictments and court cases and 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 charges and all of that so Ian Matson, look yes he is well not signed it's a trigger in his contract has been made by Chelsea which means that he is automatically now on the books until 2025 but it's only been done for one reason and it's, it's been done with the reason that it's does, it doesn't look like, it's still possible, but it doesn't look like he's going to be signing a new contract. And because of that, Chelsea will pull him up for sale. And if he's put up for sale, then a club are going to have to pay money for him. He doesn't leave for free. So that is why Chelsea have triggered this. They've triggered this as an option in order to protect themselves and get substantial money for him should a club come in for him if they are interested and he doesn't sign a new deal. That's the only reason. They haven't triggered it because, oh yeah, no, we're going to keep the player. Like they've not done it because of that. They've done it because if a club comes in, now they've got to pay. I don't get what the holdup is. I don't get what it is that he wants or what it is that Chelsea are asking or I don't know. But um, there isn't an agreement. And whether it's Matson that's asking for too much or if it's Chelsea that's lowballing him, one of them's happening at the moment and there's nothing that's been put down to paper. No pen has been put to paper. So one of the reasons that it seems like he's not signing a new contract at the moment is just simply the lack of game time. That seems to be one of the factors um, and that, if I'm not mistaken, I think so far this season he's only played a total of 83 minutes or something like that I read somewhere. Is that true? Because <laughs> if that's true, that's a bit mad. But that's, that's probably why he's not signing. Seems like it might not even be monetary. It might just be that, yes, they've offered him a new deal, but he's not being assured playing time. He's not being assured game time and he wants to play. So this is going to be, as much as we can talk about Matson and Chelsea, the conversation needs to bring in Pochettino as well. Pochettino needs to be central in this. Like, is he in your plans? Is he going to be played? Because if he is, then he'll sign, it seems like. But if he doesn't, then he's not going to sign. So let me know your thoughts down below. Personally, look, I would use him, man. Uh, Matson doesn't come across one of those players that I look at and go, nah, he's not good enough. For me, 
he possesses the couple of qualities that I absolutely need in a player for my team. If I was a manager, I would be looking at players that have technical ability and an ability to think correctly prior to receiving the ball, off the ball, as well as on the ball. Do you know what I mean? Knowing what you're going to do before you do it, he is that's one of his strengths. You can see that he is just a natural baller. In the same way that Cole Palmer is showing that at the moment, where any situation, tight spaces, no matter what, as well as even open spaces, knows where to run, his positioning is good, he doesn't lose the ball often, doesn't misplace passes. Those sort of things, for me, are, are basics. I need them in a player. Matson has it. So that's why I wouldn't want to let him go, because he's reliable. He's reliable. So... Yeah. let's see what happens let me know your thoughts down below in relation to this whole saga and where you think it might lead now a player that we didn't sign and now it's all coming out without further ado let's get into it Mohamed Kudus's agent Yen Mendelewicz have I just brutalized that name hang on Yen Yen Mendelewicz Mendelewicz I said it correctly Mendelewicz says Chelsea were in the driver's seat for Kudus, but after agreeing personal terms, low balled an offer, 20 million euros, due to an obsession with Moises Caicedo. Yeah, about that. Um, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Look, if Liverpool didn't get themselves involved, yeah, we probably would have ended up with Caicedo and Kudus. But they got involved, and we had to pay over what we were expecting. It is what it is, but there's more. He spoke. Here it is. Mohamed Kudus's agent. We agreed the contract with Chelsea. He talked to the coach, but it didn't happen because Chelsea made a ridiculous offer to Ajax. They did this a lot with players during the summer, making low offers to clubs they knew wouldn't be accepted. The truth is they were focused on the transfer of Moises Caicedo. It took up all of their energy. I can't argue with that. I think that's facts. I think this agent has come out to speak facts today. I'm not even going to say what. No, you're, st you know, you're. <laughs> what's what's the word? You're you're stubborn. You're um, you know, you're you're hurt. You're salty. Like no, no, he's not. Because Kudus got a move to West Ham in the end, and um, yeah. Chelsea had the option on the table, and it's true. We had all our energy on Caicedo. We we were treating Caicedo like he was this, the second coming of of Jesus. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like everything was on Caicedo, Caicedo, Caicedo. And as much as we, yeah, wanted Kudus, we had we did have our minds elsewhere. So I can't argue with this agent and what he has said. I think he's spoken facts, and yeah, it's just it got to a point where we just could not go after both. Is that going to hurt us? Could we have done with a Kudus? Yes, absolutely. But the way that Cole Palmer is starting to play, maybe we got away with it. Maybe we got away with it. We've got Nkunku that's meant to come back, and that's going to be in the position that Kudus would normally be playing in. Maybe we'll be okay. But, yeah, if we didn't get a Cole Palmer, for example, and Chukwumaker's injured, which he's, he's injured again, by the way, just to let you know, he's had a setback in his injury, so there's that. If we didn't have anyone to be able to play... I'd be screaming at this quote right now, going, oh my God, what are we doing? But we managed to get Cole Palmer through the door. It seems like we're covered. Fair enough. So let me know your thoughts on that. Now, talking about players and deals and the detail. Napoli's president, ADL, has decided to come out and talk about something. Here it is. Napoli president Di Laurentiis on Victor Osimhen. We verbally agreed on a new deal in August. Then if things change on his side, life goes on. There's always time. 2025 contract. Remember, I sold Koulibaly to Chelsea one year before end of his deal. Are you reading that the same way I'm reading that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Well... Awesome into Chelsea. Is that on? <laughs> Is that on? Look, um, it's very much a possibility. But, 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 but. We have to pay up. Let's just be honest. We have to pay up. The fact that the situation between Osimhen and Napoli doesn't seem as stable as it once was might help us. 
The fact that he's coming to the end of his contract might help us, but it's still going to be a substantial amount of money. Now, in the same way that Caicedo managed to drive himself out of Brighton, and even then we had to pay 115 million, <laughs> right? 110. Um, ah, yeah, 110, I think, with add ons. Liverpool wanted to pay 115 and they still got rejected. Um, <laughs> mainly because of Caicedo. But the fact that Osimhen could be a possibility doesn't mean that due to the circumstances, we're going to get him for a low price. It, we're still going to have to pay. So this deal is very, very possible as long as the money's on the table. All Chelsea have to do is put the money on the table. If we do, we will get Osimhen. 100%. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. But in the lead up to that, look, that's in January. What's it going to be like from now till January? Who knows? Maybe Jackson ends up with 15 goals by December. <laughs> Even I have to laugh at that. It's just not going to happen, is it? Uh, maybe 10. I, I really want to come on here and be like, yeah, no, Jackson's going to kill it. Of course he is. It may be Jogba, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And this is going to bring me forward to the Arsenal game and the preview and all that, because I know we're all feeling a little more positive than we were a few games ago. But we have to bring ourselves back down to earth a little bit because you never know what's going to happen on Saturday but with the striker situation if that's going to be the case where it's not looking as great as we wanted to then do we go for Osimhen? we absolutely can and personally if it does get to that point then we should so let me know down below if you think we should if you think we will how much do you think he, he, he will cost let me know down below your thoughts much appreciated and we'll see what happens up until january because there's still a lot of time so talking about arsenal huh, reese james trained didn't he well we got more this guy trained too Enzo Fernandez, fantastic to see he managed to train today in full training all good and it looks like the assessment even with Caicedo, about looking for fatigue or tiredness doesn't seem to be a factor because Enzo Fernandez trained as normal and he's looking like he's good to go. So I'm glad. I'm glad. Saturday, Arsenal is going to be a very, very interesting game. But look, the preview for that will be tomorrow. Like I said, though, we need to be a bit realistic. There's a possibility we lose this game. There's also a possibility that we win this game. Let's be honest. The, the, the feeling has kind of changed a little bit compared to how it was a few games ago. But it doesn't mean that we are going to win. Yeah, people are, I think, are getting a bit too excited and a bit too positive. And as much as that's great, uh, we're still at the level that we're at. And that doesn't mean that we're fully, fully, fully out of the trenches just yet. Yes, we've got one hand out. Yes, we're, we, we've got the rope. Yes, we're, we're on the way up. Fantastic. But are we going to actually get out the trench? If we beat Arsenal. Are we going to beat Arsenal? It's Arsenal. I'd like to say that it's the best chance that we've definitely had in a while. The, the, run into, the, run of, the run of form that we have going into this game is very helpful. But, yeah, it's still Arsenal. So... I will give you my full assessment tomorrow and my predictions and my lineup and all of that. And this bad boy is going to be coming out for the lineup. So make sure you're here for that. And I don't care if you need spec savers. It's going to be on the screen. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Now, um, like I said, to not get overexcited, it, it seems that a supercomputer tends to agree with me here and maybe agree with me too much to the point where I'm starting to disagree with it because this seems to be the final prediction of the Opta supercomputer of where Chelsea and all the other teams are going to finish at the end of the season. Check this out. Opta supercomputer now predicts Chelsea are likely to finish 10th in the Premier League season. There's the prediction, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Man City are clear favourites, according to the supercomputer, to win the Premier League. Um, Arsenal are actually down to finish third Liverpool are down to finish second and Tottenham are down to finish fourth but it's got Chelsea down as finishing 10th and Manchester United as finishing ninth that's already got me suspicious I'm sorry but I think we finish ahead of, of United United are in the mud United are, look United United have got Jim Ratcliffe coming in and Joel Glazer is going to be part of the footballing decisions and they're going to finish ahead of us with all their problems no, I'm sorry. Uh, if that happens, um, everyone at Chelsea needs to be sacked. Everybody. 
<laughs> I ain't having it. I ain't having it. That's outrageous. So yeah, this supercomputer's um, got it. Got it a bit twisted. But if we look at it, um, it's got all the other teams above us basically finishing within that vicinity. It's got Luton Town getting relegated and Burnley actually surviving, but Bournemouth and Sheffield United, Sheffield United finishing bottom and finishing bottom convincingly. So it does seem like everything else in that table is actually quite realistic yeah except for the whole liverpool arsenal thing i'm not so sure that's going to be the case i do think arsenal finish top two but we'll see they might finish top three liverpool might get a surge you never know this is actually quite commendable so the fact that they got man united ninth and chelsea 10th is actually worrying because the form that we've been on and the way that we're looking and and the way that it's analyzed it if you had asked me before Fulham, I would have completely agreed with this. I would have even said, I think we maybe even finished below 10th. But we beat Fulham, we beat Brighton, we beat Fulham, we beat Burnley. We've done it quite convincingly. And I'd like to think that if we beat Arsenal, we're going to be on the way to places. But if we don't beat Arsenal, not even don't beat, if we, it not, even if we draw, I think that's, that's okay. If we lose, yeah, we're back to square one. You just know that feeling is going to come back in and it's going to be like, oh, no, we're losing the rest. Because this running is seven games of hell. So this supercomputer, is it onto something? We've got to prove it wrong. So make sure you're here for the preview tomorrow where I will go into detail as to how we prove the computer wrong and we get three points. Now, here's some injury news. Bournemouth and US midfielder Tyler Adams will be out until February. Previous surgery in March was not good enough. He needed a new one and he's going to be out for four months at least, as reported by Paul Tonero. Ten Tenorio. The club and the national team hope for Tyler back in February and March. We dodged the bullet. Do you remember when we agreed terms with Tyler Adams and he was on the way for a medical and then we turned him away because the Caicedo deal had a breakthrough? Do you remember? Yeah. Well, actually... Caicedo, Lavia, all of that going on. So we turned Tyler Adams away. Imagine we got him. He'd be out till February and March because the operation that, he, that, he, that he'd done, the previous surgery had already been done and that was already wrong. So even if he had joined Chelsea, he'd be in the same situation as he is in right now and we wouldn't have him until March because they blundered the surgery. What a bunch of clowns. But <laughs> how do you blunder a surgery like that? Anyway, it, it's been blundered and he's paying the price for it. So thank goodness we dodged that bullet just to let you guys know. Now, Inter Milan have come out to speak and say something very interesting. His CEO, Ma, the CEO Marotta coming out. Check this out. Lukaku represents our past. It's just our past. No one is thinking about him at Inter. Not even one single person. Well, except you at the moment. But that's fine. We've done it too. Don't worry. His behavior, it happens in football. It's not the first time it happens. Listen, you're in the same boat as we are, mate. <laughs> Welcome to the club because he left us for you and now he's left you and you understand how we feel because you're now feeling the same. So Inter Milan, Chelsea, shaking hands and all of that. Nice one. Yeah, we're all in the same club. Um, don't worry, Roma will be next. <laughs> Roma's actually going to be a weird one because we know Mourinho's leaving at the end of the season, it seems like. That's actually going to be happening. He's the one who brought in Lukaku. So what's going to happen? Roma, I, I, look, Roma, you better pay up. Yeah, because we're not taking him back. I don't, someone, someone, please pay some money. Pay some money for this guy and please get him off our books. That's the last I'm going to say. Now, to end, a couple of things. Firstly, this. Jadon Sancho was left out of this season's Manchester United squad photo. He has been left out of the team and the squad completely. And for this reason, they are looking to sell him in January. So who's going to come in for Sancho? That's going to be the question. Who's going to take him? He is not in Manchester United plans whatsoever. Crazy situation to think that this was one of the players that Ten Hag was going to use. And then the whole situation happened and now he's not apologizing and Ten Hag isn't apologizing and there's no compromise and nothing's happening. And he's been kicked out and Ten Hag's refusing to move and Tanto's not got any room back into the squad. Where is he going to go? Let me know your predictions. I just asked this so that I can get your predictions as to where you think Sancho is going to end up because it's a very interesting one. There's no rumours, no links, nothing at the moment with Sancho. Where do you think he'll end up? Let me know down below. And just to end, um, we got Paris Saint-Germain against AC Milan on, uh, well, 
the start of next week for the Champions League when the Champions League returns. That's due to take place in Paris. The latest, because that's a big game. PSG AC Milan, I know most of you are definitely going to want to watch that because it's PSG AC Milan. There could be a chance that this game gets called off, just to let you know. Because, and it's coming out from a couple of French sources, there is even a PSG affiliated fan channel. Um, what's the name? Sasha and Momo. If you, are, if you understand French, you'll be able to, to understand his videos or their videos, but they're PSG supporters, big PSG channel. Um, but Sasha and Momo have come out and said that they reckon the game's getting postponed. Um, and it's not going to take place because the game is due to take place in Parc de Prince, in, in, in Paris. And right now, Paris is full of protesters for... Uh, taking up all security resources and there needs to be resources for the game and because of that due to the uh, Palestinian thing going on at the moment we're big protesters taking up Paris all the resources are being used they're definitely not going to compromise some resources for the stadium when there's that many people out in Paris and they're not moving so the game has a chance of getting called off just to let you know so don't do expect a potential cancellation for PSG AC Milan if that's going to be the case watch another Champions League game <laughs> <laughs> don't wait about for it if it does go ahead then it goes ahead and they found some policing power cool but if it doesn't then you know why let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section below much appreciated at the moment and um, i will see all of you tomorrow for possibly a couple of other ones possible news video and make sure you're here for the guaranteed match preview for Chelsea versus Arsenal as we gear up for Saturday. And on top of that, we gear up for the first watch along back on Eunice Talks Football. It's going to be a pleasure. It's going to be an enjoyable one. I'm going to make sure I enjoy it and I hope you do too. So make sure you're there for that. And to be here for that, you have to make sure you're hitting the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. Check out my new Instagram brand new follow there much appreciated please report the old one um i actually need to show you on screen report it for me if you can don't forget to check out twitter as well and all the other socials are in the description much appreciated and i will see all of you tomorrow have a good one people see you tomorrow take care and peace